Hey guys, hope you like a little introduction clip at the beginning. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions, I'm open to them all, of course. So anyway, like this video said, this is a brief introduction all about me and my path and things that I do. So, um, I started along this path about when I was 12 or so, when I came to a point in my life where I had a bit of a, a, a question of faith and a, a moment of finding myself. And it was about that time where I got in touch with my spirits and my guides and they communicated to me and we started getting a dialogue and a relationship going. And that led me to discover Wicca and magic and witchcraft and all this wonderful stuff that has shaped and formed me as a person today. So I spent um, a majority of my life up until that point um, pretty well immersed in various folk traditions within my own culture. Um, growing up with Middle Eastern parents from Armenia, um, I did grow up with a lot of different um, cultural things that were kind of like little superstitions and, and folk practices um, from just things that we grew up with, basically, that I was sort of passed down and learned and, and picked up along the way. Um, when I obviously was older, and I was about, you know, 13 or 14, I really started um, doing more research on my own and trying to find out where I was getting pulled to. And like I said, I started to get pulled towards Wicca and witchcraft. And so I started doing research. I tried to find books online and, and eventually, you know, came across a couple books and picked those up and really started to be able to have a, a solid um, base to form my practice on. So along with the books, um, I also, you know, obviously was talking to my guides and they were talking to me. So I would have you know, deep, meaningful spirit conversations with them, and I would get information through the books, and together we would piece together this whole thing and, and you know, learn to shape it, to make sense of it all, to give me clarity, and to allow for my spirit to grow and to become what it needed to be. So that process was, a you know, a long process that took me about five or six years of solid study and listening and, and, and all that jazz. And then at about the five or six year mark, um, spirits told me, my guides, kind of I felt pulled as well, to start now implementing a lot of what I was learning um, in, in actual practice. So I set up an altar. And I decided, okay, well, I'm going to set up an altar. And at the time, obviously, again, I, was, um, I wasn't as open as I was as I am now. And so my altar was basically just like a little candle on the table that I had along with um, some uh, just meaningful objects that I had. A couple, I think it was like a tiger's eye stone that I had that I still actually have. Um, it's this little guy right here. I actually have it in a necklace now so I can wear it. Um, I have that and I had a, uh, a little glass, or sorry, actually a cauldron that I had purchased finally. One of the first things I ever purchased was a cauldron. So I had that as well. And with those things, I started my practice basically with my little mini altar. And I started, and I decided, okay, well, what am I going to do exactly? So I decided to spend the first year... Um, going through the Sabbaths, the eight holy holidays within Wicca and other um, pagan traditions that are also observed. So I did that for a year, and I journal. I had a journal, and every day I would journal, and every day I would, you know, make notes about things that I was feeling or coming across. Um, I would make notes about, you know, oh, the upcoming Sabbath was coming up. I'd make a note about it, and then I would every Sabbath would perform some sort of a ritual or some sort of um, acknowledgement of the season and the holiday and I would make note about it and that was really really helpful for me to do that to have that time where I could actually sit and um, gather this knowledge and also uh, piece it all together so I took all that information that I had gathered and I applied it to my experiential stuff through you know listening and applying what I had learned in the Sabbaths. After that time, after about a year, then I decided, okay, now I'm going to take the time to not only implement the Sabbaths, but now I'm also going to start paying attention to the moon cycles. So I started paying attention to the moon cycles, and I spent another year, every moon, every full moon, I would make note. I would take a note on how I felt prior to the full moon, make note on the full moon, if I did anything spell-wise or ritual-wise, I would make notes on that, I would just do all kinds of, so I spent a lot of time 
the, the next two years after that, two, three years, journaling a lot, of course, and also practicing and then experiencing all of this. You know, I would go out and I would explore and I would find, you know, the things that these books were talking about or things that my guides were talking about and I would actually find them practically and then start to apply them. Like, okay, we're talking about the moon. I'd go out and I would look at the moon and I'd go, right, well, how do I feel? What do I get off the moon? What does it look like? How does it feel? You know, and then I would come back, you know, a couple of days later after the moon was shifted in a phase and I'd go, okay, well, now how do I feel now? And I would, again, like I said, make notes of all these things. So after that, then I decided, okay, I've done that now. Now I'm going to start implementing um, the, t the different tools of the craft and start experiencing and experimenting with those. So, of course, I had my cauldron, so I decided I was going to start with that. So I took my cauldron and I held it and I started working with it. I would burn things in it. I would light candles in it. I would put water in the cauldron and I would do rituals honoring, you know, the goddess and, and using the cauldron as a burning device, and as a as a tool for different magical things that I would do. And it would be little really small, simple things. You know, it literally would be, I would pour water in the cauldron and I would look into it and I would gaze and I would experience, well, what do I get out of this? What do I feel now? Um, I would light a candle in the cauldron and I would do the same thing. I would do the meditations and stare and, into the flame of the cauldron and experience it that way. I even put one time, I think I even put dirt in my cauldron and observed and, and showed and tried to see what that did to me, you know? So I really spent a lot of time with that. And then I, like I said, I progressed and I um, picked up other things and I said, okay, I've got an anatomy. I want to experience that. What's that all about? And I used that and I used my ceremonial dagger for a long time. And I still do, of course, it's my, it's my most prized tool that I have amongst many things. Um, but I started using that, implementing that energy and using that and, and noticing the difference between using my, you know, my hands or my body to direct the energy and forces and command and, and all those things. And then using the athame to draw these energies the same way and to, to channel. It was really interesting. Like I said, I did that. Same thing with my wand and the chalice and the altar pentacle that I had at the time. I, you know, I implemented all of these different things. Um, and I, like I said, I journaled and I learned from all those things. In addition to those, obviously as well, I also, because each of the tools have um, elemental correspondences, which I will do another video um, going over the elemental correspondences of all the different tools within Wicca and different traditions and give you a bit of an overview. But like I said, in this, like I said, right now, um, I spent, so after I did the tools, I was like, all right, cool, now I'm going to experience the elements and the directions. So I did that for about a month or two. You know, I would go out and experience different seasons, uh, different elements, I'm sorry, not seasons, and different. I would go and stand in different directions and, and do meditations on different directions and go, all right, now I'm going to do a meditation to visit the north and to experience the power of earth. And then I would do, you know, the east with air, and I would do south with fire, and west with water, and I would do all these things and, and make lots and lots of journal notes. I mean, I, I'm a collector of journals, so I have a lot of journals, and I use them. I use them to their fullest extent, and I have, I still have those journals, I still look back at those journals, because they do provide a lot of really good insight into all the things that I did. So, after all that... I, like I had at that point, had pretty much solidified my beliefs and my practices and my understanding of different things. And I started seeking out outside things. And I came across a couple of different groups. Um, one group I ended up coming across with, I really clicked with pretty well, and they were really nice people. And they would do, you know, monthly moon workings, and they would also celebrate the, the Sabbaths at different points of the year with various types of celebrations. And so I, would do, I did that. I did that for about a year or so I believe and then after that the, the group actually disbanded a little bit and and had um kind of everybody went their separate ways which was fine you know it happens um after that point I then returned more to just sort of solitary work with just me and my guides and all that stuff um and then after that years passed and this was years later um I came to work out in North Hollywood um, and there was a local occult store nearby called the Green Man Store. And I said to check it out. And I checked it out. And it was this amazing, cute little store, you know, full of really nice people. And I immediately became drawn and, and so um, 
I don't know what the words were. Like, I felt really, I felt at home. Like, I was in the right place. And so I started hanging out there, and they had built a community up. And I started coming to their events and their rituals and coming taking some of their classes and just interacting with the staff and with the people. And I really grew to understand the true meaning of tribe. And, and, that, and I really got that connection that I had with these other people that I had experienced from before. So it was a really, really nice experience for me. And I'm glad to have had it. Um, I obviously now work at that store years later. Um, I work at that store as a practicing witch and tarot and tarot and coffee ground reader there. So I offer my skills that I have acquired over the years to help people in their issues and their problems and, and give them clarity and insight to help them grow and to allow their spirits to grow um, and so that they can evolve and make good progress in their lives. So that's a little bit about me. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will do another video explaining and answering all of your questions. Um, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up like. Um, feel free to follow me on um, Instagram and Twitter, my handle on all of those, and I will try to post a little uh, a link on the annotation screen right here. It is at HGMagic with a CK. You will find me on Instagram and Twitter with both of those usernames. So hopefully you check me out, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day, guys.